Design of General Purpose Industrial Helical Gear Reduction Unit Part 2. This is Module 3 and in this lecture I shall discuss about the gear unit design. First is pinion and gear design part 1. Basically I will uh, we shall calculate the module for brim strength. Now, uh, in details in this lecture I shall cover selection of stage ratios, gear and pinion teeth numbers, determination of design torque, material properties and material selection. In gear and pinion set which one is weaker and to be designed. Choosing other parameters of Lewis formula, module selection uh, in first atom or preliminary whatever you like to say. Now, selection of transmission ratio earlier, however, again I repeat considering two stage reduction the numbers of teeth of pinion and gears were selected as follows. Now, first stage the gear is uh, 81 teeth number 81 and pinion is 17 and transmission ratio is coming 4.76. We have to reach close to 37 to 40. Now, the uh, I repeat again why we have taken that uh, teeth ratios in a fraction uh, to avoid or reduce the dynamics uh, which is called tooth hunting. If the ratio is an integer suppose uh, there is a say 3 ratio completely then every after 3 cycle the same pair will come in contact. Now, there are uh, two possibilities or among other possibilities two are prominent one there might be pitch error this means that pitch along the pitch circle may not be equal that happens due to the eccentricity in mounting while gear is being cut. Although it is a minor but still in each and every gear there might have some pitch error. Secondly, the surface roughness it might be every after 3 cycles when the ratio is 3 the pair coming in contact they have some roughness due to which again there will be increase in dynamics. To avoid that these are mid fraction and same teeth meeting repeatedly after a few cycles is called tooth hunting. To avoid the tooth hunting we make the ratio fractional. So, second stage what we have taken 131 by 16, 131 the gear and 16 is the pinion 8.19. Earlier I mentioned that in no stage it is preferable that ratio should not be more than 6 and to optimize the size again it should not be equal. Say for example, if you want to reach at 36 we may think of 6 into 6, but that will make the gearbox very large. There will be if we consider the figure then there will be huge gap. To avoid that we make the ratio in such a way that this gap is minimum. Again it is not an easy task to uh, select the ratio so that it will be optimum design in a single atom. However, from practice it is seen 
that usually if the ratio is kept in this way, it might be of optimum close to optimum design that depends on experience later one can go for optimization if the production is large. Now, in second stage 8.19 justification is that for uh, such a ratio like 37 to 40, we have taken this example intentionally probably one can try for three stage, but three stage will be always expensive. So, second stage even if it is a slightly larger say 8, 9 it is very often it is done and as the pitch line velocity is less there. So, second stage we can go a slightly higher than 6. Now, total ratio is coming in that way 39.01 which is acceptable. Next we shall consider the design of gears. Now, first stage if we consider the formula it is modified Lewis formula for bending strain we find this module can be estimated by considering the torque helix angle allowable strength of the material width factor form factor and the number of teeth. We have considered the helical gear. So, we will now consider the other values. Now, if the power is given in that case we can calculate the torque from the power which is power divided by 2 pi into angular speed of that shaft. In this case our torque is given. So, given torque is 30 Newton meter. Now, here is a question shall we design the gears considering the torque is equal to 30 Newton meter or we should take some other higher value because there is a question of safety. Now, there is no clear cut methods by which we can we can say that we should take this much torque, but in this case as the starting torque 200 percent and if we consider the this gearbox will be started now and then that means in a day it might be starting 10 times or 8 times in that case it is better to go for designing the gears considering the torque is equal to 60 Newton meter that is 2 times twice 200 percent torque. Now, this will give uh, we can say this is a fail safe design moreover unless there is a question of optimization and if such gearbox are in the production line of a gearbox manufacturer who offer such gearbox, gearbox for a certain range of operations in that case whether the starting torque is 200 percent or 150 percent probably same gearbox can be used in one in 150 percent it will be slightly over design. So, we have considered the torque is double for designing the gears. Now, material proposed is E N 19 and for, uh, for pinion for gears it is E N 18 A and for shaft E N 8. Uh, now, from the uh, material specification the ultimate strength is 940 mega Pascals uh, for E N 19 and for E N 18 A it is H 60 mega Pascal and uh, for EN8 it is 570 mega Pascal and yield strength is 600 in case of uh, pinion EN19 in case of gear it is 550 mega Pascal in case of uh, EN8 it is 280 mega Pascals and BHN for the BHN means brilliant hardest number. Um, 
it will be 300 to 340 in case of pinion material in case of gear material it is 250 to 300. Now, I would like to say at that hardness if the usually this blanks are forged and then machined. So, after forging if it is heat treated to raise the hardness 300 to 340 and in case of gear 250 to 300 still that is machinable with the hob cutters and there is no necessary to uh, grind it. So, that is why it has the material has been proposed like this. Now, again if we look uh, quickly into the detailed specification of the materials there is E N 18 A what we find that B S standard for E N 18 A, E N 18 these are more or less same. So, we can consider that these are same material we have we have taken 18 A and Dean standard is also as we find it is same 37 C R 4 and uh, Indian standard I S we find 40 C R 1 in both cases 18 A or 18 and uh, EN is European norms that is uh, again either EN 18 or EN 18 A these are specified there is a small difference which are not projected in other specifications. Similarly, as we see EN 19 that is according to Indian standard 40 C R 4 M O 3 and um, EN 8 is uh, 45 C 8 you can simply call 45 uh, C. Now, what it is if you go to the next slide for N 19 composition chemical compositions are like that carbons is 0 0.35 to 0.4 percent and uh, silicon is 0 0.10 to 0 0.35, manganese is 0 0.50 to 0 0.8, phosphorus uh, less than 0 0.035, sulfur less than 0 0.050, chromium 0 0.9 to 1.5 and uh, molybdenum 0.2 to 40 and um, as you see that it is called 40 C R it is called 40 C R 4 MO3 that means 40 means here 0.4 percent carbon, CR means 0.4 percent chromium, MO3 means 0.3 percent molybdenum. So, um, in case of 18 the specification as you see there you will find it on the uh, printed note and uh, for uh, EN8 as you find it is simply a uh, medium carbon steel it is not we should not call is alloy steel and carbon percentage is 0 0.36 to 0 0.44 it is very good for saps of medium load also it can be used for gears. Now, with heat treatment these materials are further improved. So, let us consider EN 19 which is equivalent material with AISI 4140 that is American um, in, in industrial standard or something like that. The DIN is the German standard, IS is the Indian standard, EN is the European norm standard uh, and GB is the Chinese standard. Uh, GB and uh, DIN and IS more or less same thing. and uh, Japanese standard is SCM 4406. There are different uh, all countries are having their own standard although there is a international standard also. Now, these are heat treated materials properties can be improved by heat treated. Now, thermal uh, processing that is temperature uh, 
if you raise if you go for forging it is um, 1050 to 850 degree centigrade and if you go for annealing then 680 to 720 and annealing means the bring the material into normal after forging and uh, also this non normalizing is uh, also after heat treatment it is 840 to 880. Then quenching, quenching is that after heating the material is put either into water or in the oil um, it is for the hardening for quick cooling it is done and uh, by that the uh, material is hardened and tempering is called heating uh, for the process of uh, increasing the uh, stress level. So, tempering are qu and quenching they go together to um, have the to increase the strength of the material and um, hardness after annealing it is usually 241. Um, for usual material and uh, as I told this uh, this hardening is necessary to increase the stresses usually uh, for gears uh, these materials are hardened and if we raise the uh, hardness up to 300 to 340 stresses uh, strength of the materials will increase, but still it will remain uh, uh, able to machining machinability say for the example hobbing etcetera. Now, we will try to estimate the module in a gear pair which one to be designed because if we consider the twice T here the T is the design torque that means in this case it will be 60 Newton meter. If we consider the this part except the allowable strength S0 into Y other part will be same for gear and pinion because when the we will go to the design of the gear torque will be increased by the transmission ratio and uh, Z also will be increased by the same number. So, this ratio will remain same psi is the width factor which is active width factor so, that will remain same also. So, and C V C W are same beta is the helix angle will remain same. So, what we find S 0 Z that will so if we consider S 0 Y, Y is the form factor with respect to the formative number of teeth because we are considering the helical gear which I have already discussed y is against the formative number of teeth which is given by the actual number of teeth divided by cos cube of the helix angle. So, if we consider that form factor and the allowable strength for gear and if we consider the allowable strength for pinion and pinion form factor then with these two values definitely one will be less than the other. So, we should design for that one which is less because that will give the more amount of module in calculation. Now, pinion teeth number is 17 and gear teeth number is 18. Now, allowable strength of selected material in gear design that means gear pair design. It is to be noted that in the following Lewis formula for bending strength of gear tooth S 0 by C V C W is the ultimate allowable strength for particular gear considering its dynamic and lubrication conditions in opera operations. C V factor is taken on the accuracy of the gears and the pitch line velocity. So, if we go for hop cutting gears 
finished by hop cutting. If you go for gears finished by grinding, they definitely there will be difference in surface finish. And CW is the wear load factor or lubrication factor which is uh, considered that 1.25 in case of regular but not very often lubrication whereas it can be taken as one for the force lubrication. So, this takes care of the this definitely S0 CV by CW will reduce the stress value for which we will get more module and design will be safe. Now, S0 is taken as certain proportion of either ultimate strength or yield strength of the selected material. Yield strength divided by 2.5 for gear design is often considered. This, this will be ultimate strength, ultimate strength we should consider this is ultimate strength. So, we should consider ultimate strength divided by 2.5 for the design this is not yield strength ultimate strength. Now, we take in that case this 940 was the value divided by 2.5 it is around 240 mega Pascals and for gear it is coming 220 mega Pascals. So, considering nominal helix angle, now here at this stage we consider the helix angle is about 12 degree. Then for pinion the formative number of teeth uh, is given 17 by cos cube of helix angle and the formula for the formative form factor is 0.484 minus 3.28 divided by formative number of teeth. In case of pinion it is coming 0.303, in case of gear it is coming 0.446. Obviously, with the increase in teeth number this form factor increases. So, we now compare S0 into y for, y, uh, for gear and S0 uh, in y for pinion and we find that S 0 y for pinion is less than S 0 y for gear. This means that pinion is weaker and we should design the pinion. Now, pinion shaft is the input shaft therefore, uh, torque is in this design we shall consider 60 Newton meter and the helix angle 12 degree and uh, width is also width factor is also 20. Here another thing I would like to mention that in case of gear we have considered the torque is 60 Newton meter, but in case of shaft we may go for uh, less torque or more torque that depends on what the component is the what factor will be multiplied in design with the nominal torque that depends on what component it is and what is its function. In case of gear we have taken say 200 percent uh, torque than the nominal torque in case of shaft it might be different depending on um, what is the shape of the shaft and what is the dynamics coming on the shaft. Anyway continuing with the gears we have taken the torque is 60 Newton meter. Now, uh, in the formula we have to calculate the C V values and in that case we should know the size of the pinion, but before uh, first calculation how we know that what is the size of the pinion. So, we have to assume something from experience usually it is considered in this case we have considered the module may be close to 2.5. So, on, on that value 
we have considered the velocity p slide in velocity is equal to the diameter pitch diameter of that component that means pinion which is pi into z into module divided by cos of the helix angle into omega 1 is 1500 divided by um, 1000 into 60 because we have divided by 1000 to make it meter. So, it comes 3.41 meter per second and the velocity factor in that way we have considered 4.5 divided by 4.5 plus v which is for accurately cut gear we will consider although there will be no heat treatment after the cut after cutting the gear and there will be no grinding, but it will be very accurately cut by the hob. So, we consider this formula and we find that C V is coming 0.57. Now, with this value uh, and C W we have considered 1.25 that while lubrication with regular inspection this means that inspection will be regularly, but not may not be very frequent and it is um, in, in oil sump the gears are in oil sump that is the splash lubrications we have considered this value is 1.25. Now, if we substitute the value the module comes 2.18 millimeter. 2 into 60 is the torque, 0.978 is the cos of helix angle, 240 into 10 to the power 6 is S0, 0.57 is Cv, Cw is 1.25, width factor is 20, modified form factor is 0 0.303 and teeth number is 17. So, we get 2.18 and here we may conclude that first is normal module in first attempt or in first round may be taken as 2.5 millimeter. Why I have said it is a first round? Because later from other load consideration we may find this module may need to increase. And again I suggest that any machine design book you will find this type of treatment although this uh, modified form uh, formula may not be available, it will, it will not be available. Uh, I have suggested two machine design books and also I suggest the PSG design data book, but one can follow any machine design book in this regards. Thank you.